Hey there, welcome, I'm Sim UK, and this is my Overpass review. Overpass releases on February 27th, 2020 on the Epic Games Store. Overpass is an extreme off-road racing challenge. You have to negotiate scree slopes, steep inclines, and obstacles, both man-made and natural. There are more than 40 different tracks to enjoy, and over 20 different branded buggies and quads, including Polaris, Yamaha, Arctic Cat, and Suzuki. In order to overcome these highly technical challenging tracks, you will need to manage your acceleration, your differentials, and your drivetrain. It's intended to provide high replay value, and if you pre-order, you will get the Yamaha YFZ 450 RSE and the YXZ 1000 SE, which have both been prepared by SE Power Sports. Overpass is brought to us by Zordix Racing and Big Ben, and Overpass is available on the Epic Game Store in three editions, Day One, Standard and Deluxe. Each edition offers more liveries and vehicles for you to enjoy, plus it can offer some special access to sponsors within the career and repair kits, which are going to be invaluable because you're definitely going to damage your vehicle. All of the additional content can be bought separately via DLCs as well. The game offers full career mode, quick race, custom setup race, and you can compete in competitions both locally or online. It has been optimised for multiplayer, so you can compete online and make it onto the leaderboards there, or you can play in local versus friends mode with hot seat and split screen features, which is pretty cool. There's also an open arena for just messing about and practising. In the career mode, you will compete in a single one-off season. In order to unlock Hardcore mode, you will need to complete Elite difficulty first and finish in third place or above overall. You can watch my full first season on Sim UK Let's Play right now, but I'd rather you stay here and watch the end of the review first. You have to attract sponsors, manage, upgrade and repair your vehicles, and also organise your calendar. You can accept bets to beat your opponents, and you can win or lose extra money if you do that. There are approximately 29 different tracks and you will be racing in both buggies and quads, that's decided by the event, not by you. And you will start with 6 buggies and 4 quads right from the get-go. In order to unlock the rest you will need to finish in the top 3 positions of the tracks and races that you compete in. Progression and scheduling is all signified and done and managed via this rather strange hexagonal system. I'm not a fan of it to be honest. At the end of the season you simply start again, although you do keep whatever you have unlocked. There's over 40 tracks to enjoy and they include obstacle and hill climb, each with their own difficulty level. You will race on dirt, gravel, sand, rock, water and you will race in daytime or at night time and in variable weather conditions. You can earn medals by completing tracks within time limits and that will unlock you special awards. And there are numerous man-made obstacles that I quite enjoy. There's the seesaw, the slalom, bridges, tyres, logs, there's a lot of stuff. And also, there's a lot of natural hazards that you're going to have to compete with. Rocks, trees, inclines, drops, bogs and water. The art to each of these is identifying a route, approaching it at the right speed and in the right way. You've got four-wheel drive, lock differential and two-wheel drive. Some of them with gears, but mostly without, just automatic. Hitting an obstacle too hard will certainly damage parts of your vehicle, be it the wheel, suspension, frame or the tyres. Some routes will need to be taken very carefully, whereas others require somewhat of a hard and fast attack approach. And there are often numerous different routes available to you. You will have to find one that works for both you and your current vehicle. Good results obviously result in sponsorship opportunities and money. And money offers you new vehicles and upgrades. You can make your buggy more resilient to damage, you can upgrade the drivetrain, and much, much more. Buggies and quads from all the manufacturers are included, Yamaha, Polaris, Arctic Cat and Suzuki, and these tracks are quite literally highly technical. I can see what they were going for in this game, and in some areas they nearly got it right. In the advertising spiel, it promotes realistic physics. They're not. It, it certainly has some good moments in the game, but as far as physics go, it is a long, long way off. Sometimes it can feel quite close, but on the most part, it just isn't there. The buggies feel weightless, they often struggle to find grip in situations where they shouldn't. They ping, they bounce, they flip, 
and basically behave in a very undignified manner. They will clip their surroundings and refuse grip when they shouldn't. It's 99% impossible to correct a buggy using the wheels and throttle approach, regardless of the position you're in. There is simply no feedback whatsoever, audible or otherwise. So swapping camera is absolutely essential to success. And the spinny camera that allows you to look around the vehicle is awful. At least on the Xbox 360 it is. You cannot blow your engine up as the game stops you from redlining, even when you're running in manual gears. And there's this auto brake feature, which is an absolute travesty. Basically, it will cause you to reverse off cliffs just by trying to brake, and I'll explain why. Because the game has this auto brake feature, sometimes the game will think you've stopped and put the brake on for you. So now, when you hit the brake, you're actually going to reverse. Hence, rolling off the back of a cliff. And, incidentally, you cannot just roll back, so there's no way of holding the clutch and just letting the weight of the vehicle roll you back slightly so that you can get the right line up the next bit of the hill. That simply isn't possible. You're either accelerating forwards or accelerating backwards. Or stopped. Dead stopped. There's a little cheat that I discovered. If you just accelerate and let go, it will basically put the handbrake on for you. If you accelerate and let go, it will put the handbrake on for you. There's a lot of places where I've really struggled to get up an embankment, and that technique has got me all the way to the top without issue. It works 90% of the time. There is almost zero immersion in Overpass. Certainly I did have some fun on some tracks. I did enjoy certain races and certain tracks and events especially the obstacle courses. I actually really enjoyed racing around the obstacle courses, but it wasn't realistic. At no point did the handling feel realistic. The physics aren't realistic. The career, that's not realistic either. Car management, that's not realistic. I'm pretty sure betting on yourself is illegal. It is in most sports, but that's in the game and that kind of feels unrealistic. No, this game is not realistic at all. It is very, very much an arcade game. And unfortunately, it's lacking fun. And it's lacking fun because some of the tracks are so hard to complete. When I say that, I don't mean so hard to complete fast, but just to reach the finish line to get to the end of the track, it's really hard. The poor physics, the lack of grip, the lack of feedback, all adds to the frustration. And the seriously limited number of modifications and setups that you can make for vehicles just makes it all worse. Rage quitting in this game are often going to come together. I'm absolutely sure of it. There's also a significant delay that I notice between switching from accelerate to brake and reverse to accelerate. You have to allow the revs to drop below a certain amount before you can do it. So sometimes when you hit the accelerator, nothing will happen. You'll just stay stationary and that can cause even more problems. Most of the vehicles I've raced with simply do not have an option for manual gears, even though you go into the options and turn manual gears on, or rather automatic gears off, they just don't seem to have manual gears. I've got to say, the ones that do are much, much easier to drive and it's much easier to make progress, although you cannot allow them to roll back either, as the auto brake still stops you, even though you've got manual gears. So, if you want to roll back, you have to go into reverse, which I've already explained is awkward, and the whole bloody thing gets quite annoying. The audio in Overpass is horrendous. Now, I like to sugarcoat these things where I can, but the audio in this game is ridiculous. There's hardly any feedback audio whatsoever. It doesn't matter what terrain type you're driving on, if you're scraping against rocks, there's no creaks, there's no bangs, there's no dirt flicking up, there's no stone noises, there is absolutely nothing. All there is, is the engine noise from the vehicle, which is just maxed out permanently because even that isn't very realistic. Each vehicle engine is extremely poor. All you basically get is one single drawn out ah, kind of noise, and that is it not authentic, it's not unique to each vehicle either. It's certainly not good. Even the menu's audible feedback system is dated and irritating. The music is average, but I always turn that off anyway, and there's not even a single voice in the entire game. Win, lose or draw, nobody says anything, ever. It's a significant distraction from an immersion perspective, so much so 
that the audio in this game actively blocks any kind of real immersion at all. I don't know what is wrong with this game. It's either my system or it's this game. I'd be interested to hear from anybody who's got this game, but no matter what I do, this game wants to play in 720p. I keep changing it and it keeps changing it back. The default for maximum settings is just all kinds of wrong and the game looks worse as a result. In 1080p it does look a heap better, especially the god rays and the textures and stuff, but every time I stop and restart this game, there we are again, maximum settings, 720p. Performance is good, as you might expect. 90% of the time I didn't have any issues at all, but I did suffer some serious stutters. It could be something that was happening in my system, an update, something like that. So I'm not wholeheartedly saying it's bad, 90, probably 95% of the time I had zero stutters, smooth 100 plus FPS, no problems whatsoever. But I did experience a few serious stutters on a few different tracks, so there's a possibility that some fine tweaking is still required in the whole graphics and performance area of this game. I'm running an i7-9800K, which is clocking at 4.9 gigahertz. It's got multiple SSDs and a GTX 1080 Ti. And when I've got it on max settings, when I force it into max settings at 1080p, it looks okay. As I say, the FPS is high, well over 100 on them. And on the most part, it was fine. Um, you know, some of the tracks I really got to hit really hard and I had a really good round. And yeah, it just works. It works pretty well sometimes most of the time it's it's okay the whole if there was a key word for this game it would be average again the vehicle modeling is average at best not overly impressive at all to be honest and as you can see from the opening cutscenes it's not it's not brilliant is it the maps uh in contrast are actually one of the best features in overpass they're not incredible but i think they're pretty good actually some tracks are better than others but a lot of them do look and feel pretty authentic. So I actually do like the tracks and especially the obstacles on the most part, at least. It's the hill climb that I really struggle with, but from a graphical and performance perspective, I really do like the tracks. So I definitely give the tracks a big thumbs up. If there was one thing I'd say about the tracks that could be improved is some of the routes up did feel a little bit linear. Like, you know, you can look, you look at an area of the, of the track and you're like, I know I should be able to get grip here but you just can't, unless you're in the right gear. And even sometimes then, so you'll be in a position, you're like, okay, I need to just back it up a little bit so that I can make a decent run at this bit of track. So you try and reverse and it just kind of slides sideways. Sometimes it even drives forwards. It's, it's all a bit, it's all a bit broken, to be fair. You can customize your character a little bit. There's male and female characters, sort of. There's a few outfits, a few helmets and a few gloves. What I thought was, most interesting throughout the whole customization experience that I had was that the gloves were way more expensive than the suits were, which I thought was a bit unrealistic. There are different liveries for vehicles. To be honest with you, the modeling is so unimpressive that I, I really couldn't care less about them. You unlock them by finishing in the top three on different tracks, and then you're allowed to buy them after that once you've unlocked them. You can also unlock and then buy other vehicles, and you can unlock and buy upgrades. Pretty much everything is locked to start with, except for the opening vehicles that you get immediate access to. And with only um, only by playing the game and doing well can you actually unlock these things. You might be able to play it on the easiest difficulty settings and unlock everything quicker, but to be honest with you, I just went straight for Elite. I went for the hardest possible uh, experience because that's, you know, I want a challenge. And certainly some of the tracks offer a challenge, but... Um, yeah, you may be able to unlock them quicker just by going and racing on easy tracks and finishing in the top three. I mean, I was beating people by a minute, minute and a half sometimes, but then I was also sometimes a good eight to ten minutes behind them, so just bear that in mind. The game is fully optimised for multiplayer and co-op, and um, as 95% of the time I was actually running this game with high FPS and issue-free, I'm inclined to believe that it is. Um, it's early access. I had this game before it was actually released, so there was pretty much nobody online for me to play with, unfortunately. I do like the fact that there are different options for local co-op, the split screen and hot seat, really great features to have. And then there's these online leagues and competitions that you can uh, apply to be part of. And I think 
Uh, there's global uh, best laps get tracked and downloaded to your system as well. To be honest with you, information on this is vague at best. I think the best thing you can do is go to their Facebook page for more information or go to the website and ask them directly. I, I tried to figure out the answers to these questions, but I, just, I couldn't really figure out what was going on. It seems to promote these online leagues and competitions, but I, I, see, I don't know where you go. I don't know how you join them. It's a bit confusing for me. So I played this game on an Xbox 360 controller without any issues at all. Everything was arcadey, the acceleration, braking and steering. Yes, it was not very good in that sense, especially the handbrake, which to be honest with you was a bit like, when you put the handbrake on, it was a bit like spinning the arse end of a shopping trolley round. That's how it felt, that kind of movement. It's not good. It all worked, it was all A-OK. -okay. I haven't tried my wheel. And to be honest with you, I, it says it's 100% control support. So it probably will work, but to be honest with you, I just didn't feel like there was any need to get my wheel out. It's just, it's not realistic enough a game to warrant it, to be honest. I could be mistaken. I could be mistaken. I'll update the review at some point. Uh, I'll try my wheel out. I just haven't had a time to do it. So um, apologies for that. Sometimes I can't get to everything, but um, to be honest with you, I don't think it'll feel right. I really don't think it'll feel right, right with a wheel, but I will try it and I will get back to you. So I apologize for not having that information available for you right now. So um, as far as the AI go, um, I played my first career on the Elite difficulty, which is the hardest setting that you can play before you unlock Hardcore. You need to finish in the top three of Elite in order to unlock the Hardcore mode. You never actually see any AI at all. You only see their finishing time. So. I'm referring to the, the difficulty part more than the AI part. I know it's technically incorrect to do that, but that's where we're going with it. So anyway, on that setting, the AI are super, super easy. I mean, I was smashing them by a minute or more on some tracks, even with multiple faults stacking up against me. And incidentally, sometimes you will get faults against you when I really don't think you should, but mm, that's for another, another discussion. On some tracks, they are super, super easy. But on some of the tracks, or rather some of the tracks are especially hard, like DNF hard. I've never broken a vehicle to the point where it won't finish, but I have been at the point where I just cannot find a route up. I cannot get there. I cannot, I just, I just cannot get the grip. I cannot get the right speed. I cannot, I just can't get up these routes. There isn't one that I have failed to get up, but I have been like 10 minutes slower than the slowest AI. Some tracks are really hard, some tracks are really easy. Each player is probably going to find that they're better at one style or the other. The most difficulty for me came from accelerator control. It just didn't seem to work right for me. Trying to get sort of clutch bite without a clutch and you got the auto braking system. Ah, it was, it was pretty awful. So, to be honest with you, I didn't spend any money on upgrades and stuff like that. I bought a new chassis and that was about the only thing I really invested in. So all of the experiences I've had are from the default vehicle. So perhaps racing on Elite with the basic vehicle isn't something you should be doing in this game. I'm not entirely sure. You can watch my Let's Play series and you can decide for yourself because on some tracks I was like amazingly quicker than the AI and on other tracks I was horrifically slower. So you watch the Let's Play series and decide for yourself. The UI... Uh, there's no other word for it. It's horrendous. It would have looked dated and unpolished in the 90s. I hate it. I really, personally, passionately hate the UI in this game. Sponsors, during the career, the sponsors, proposals, the sales and the bets, they're all clumped into a tiny, tiny little scrollable window. And to accept them, you simply have to click one button. There are no changes. There's no audio confirmation or fanfare of your acceptance. You literally scroll, see, click, move on. That's not immersive. That is so not immersive. And I think I've signed multiple um, contracts with different companies now. Couldn't tell you who any of them are because I don't care. The game doesn't make it feel like I've achieved anything. It's just, oh, a bit more money. Yeah, I'll do that then, whatever. And sometimes I don't even bother looking because they all look the same as well. It's not like they're different colors or anything. You know, the, the sponsorship offers and the sometimes you get sale offers in the shop. They just look the same. There's very little difference between them, to be honest with you. The UI is horrible across the board. The menu, the settings, the schedule, the career, everything. I really don't like it. I don't like the HUD particularly either. 
Everything about the UI in this game is offensive to my eyes. I've got to say the tutorial is adequate, it does enough, it teaches you the basics, but the game itself is just lacking in so many areas, so the tutorial itself can only do so much. Often you can find multiple paths over the terrain. For this last part of the hill climb, it's up to you to find your way up. Despite everything I've said, and this is going to confuse you, or annoy you, or both, Overpass is not a bad game at all. But in order to enjoy it, you're going to need to curb your expectations, or you just, you're not going to fully, fully enjoy the experience. Certainly this game can give you anywhere from, say, 6 to 60 hours of unique gameplay, dependent on how quickly you learn the game's methods and techniques. But there are going to be large chunks of that where you are going to be verging on rage quitting, not because of what it lacks, but because it's actually really hard. And that is a quality that I do admire, because this kind of racing is called extreme for a reason. Unfortunately, everywhere I look in this game, it lacks polish. It lacks that high quality polish. From the menus to the vehicle modeling and the extremely basic career and horrific UI, sponsorship, leaderboards and challenges are all delivered in a very poor and basic manner. The maps I do actually quite like, but I also do dislike parts of them where they feel very linear. And all of the steep hill climbs are really tricky and I'm not sure they should be as tough as they are. I mean, it's not that they're tough, it's that the physics and the vehicle, you know, there are, there are places on that hill climb where you know you should be able to get some traction on the wheels and it just behaves in the most obscure manner. The hill climbs give me nightmares, I'm not kidding you. I'll be honest, for £31.99 this game is priced too high, that's for the basic version, it's £39.99 for the deluxe version. I would say this game would be fairly marketed somewhere in the very very low 20s, 20, maybe £20 to £22, perhaps I'd push as far as saying £28 for the full deluxe version, but certainly I think they're asking too much for the game, it just hasn't got that high end quality polish, why does it have a high end price tag? It's far too unpolished, it's too shallow in key areas, and it's incredibly frustrating for all of the wrong reasons that hopefully I've adequately highlighted in this review. It isn't exactly a terrible game, but it sure as heck is not a simulator. If you're looking for an extreme off-road racing arcade, then this is perfect for you, and let's be honest, there aren't many competi competitors out there for this particular type of racing experience. But if you're looking for a fleshed out career, not going to happen. If you're looking for realistic physics, they haven't got them. And if you want advanced mechanical customization, you're certainly not going to find that here. And all these missing features, all the issues and the missing features that I've mentioned in this review, if they were included into this game, then it would warrant that asking price. But as it is today, from what I've played, what I've experienced, and I have to convey my thoughts to you, that is too high an asking price. I don't think, I don't think it's going to sell well. I really don't. I could be totally wrong. I'm not normally, I normally get these things very right, but I think the price on this is going to have to come down in order to entice people in. It's just, it's not, it's not there. If they continue working on it, if it's like an early access title and they're going to totally overhaul the career and totally update the UI, then maybe that's a big step towards such a high price tag. But, you know, it, it's not a bad game. I did enjoy parts of it, but it's, it's not a great game. It's not a great game unless you're looking for off-road Simcade. It's not even Simcade, it's just Arcade. It's, um, yeah, it's a tricky one. It's it's not great, uh, I've got to be honest with you. I, I'll i be honest, I don't even know what score this gets until after I've made the review, because I make the review, then I listen back to it, <clears throat> and then I calculate based off the positive and negative points that I've highlighted during my review and at the end of that I get a score and I put the score up on the thumbnail. So I'm intrigued to find out what I think of this game. I think it's going to be at best low 60s, maybe even 50 something. But it's got something, there are some good bits. I urge you to go watch my gameplay because that I think will give you more information than just the review. Because all those issues are in there, I mean there are some expletives, there are some I get frustrated with my controller sometimes, I get angry, I get annoyed, I struggle, I, and then I have some really good races where I, I'm literally just perfect and I don't make any mistakes at all and I'm really zipping 
you know, fast past all these people. And it's kind of fun, it's, it's good. At no point is it particularly realistic, but it is kind of fun. And then I get to a hill climb and all my nightmares start again. So I urge you, take this into consideration, watch some other reviews, go watch my Let's Play series, make up your own mind. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm very interested to hear what you think. Please let me know. Take care of yourself, guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. See you in the next one. Bye for now.